back with Alex to discuss the, the latest week in the Big Brother 25 house and a Felicia HOH, Alex. Uh, the target's still on Heisem. And on Monday, we said that it's uh, like if the other side won and they were going to backdoor Heisem, then yeah, that's the right plan. But them taking out Heisem themselves seems a little over the top. It is absolutely over the top. I hope at least someone comes to their senses in the professors. Uh, maybe Mimi could just be like, why are we doing this? Like, Felicia, you do not need to blow yourself up right now by voting out. Like, because the minute Heisen gets backdoored, he will start telling everyone else how integral Felicia was in the professors. Like, it's not like a, you know, it's it's yeah. a very stupid idea, in my opinion. Um I'm, I'm almost hoping that Felicia has like a moment to herself and she's like, I'm not doing any of that. I'm just saying it. I would I would have done that. Like if I won this week, I'd be like, yeah, I'm doing that. And then hope for the best <laughs> and not do it. Um, but. I mean, yes, I have my little uh, hashtag save Heisen here right now. Even though I hate the guy and I still hate the guy. It's too, I can't, he can't go home yet. He needs to stick oh, around no. because he is a good villain, even though he doesn't, Embrace it enough, but I, yeah, I, I want him to stay for as long as possible until like everyone shatters. Um, I also love how delusional he is right now. He has no idea, which makes sense. Like, why would you expect your own alliance to take you out, even if this you early. are a comp beast? Yeah, like this is actually insane. So, who knows? I mean, I want him to stay. We'll get back to Heisen, but uh, I did feel like Felicia did good with her talk today. Like, she told the the right people different things and different targets. They're uh, not really telling Red the truth, even though he's in the Alliance as well. That's the one thing I would say. Everything else is great. Like, she, I think she's great at talking. She's She has a knack for, like, getting people to feel good about her. Like, in the beginning, I was like, oh, people just think Sari and Felicia are good with them because Sari is doing the work. But Felicia's also doing really well with getting people to trust her and think that she's with them. Um, and Felicia's good at, like, code switching. Like, her and America like to talk shit a lot. I love it. It's actually really funny to watch. Um, but then, like, her and Cameron, a whole different conversation and stuff. <laughs> they were they were getting a little close today. They were. Felicia was Felicia was mommy for Cameron. <laughs> Apparently, Cameron thinks he's daddy, but he needs his mommy. That's really what it is. <laughs> That's true. Um, <laughs> My thing is, though, that the conversation with Red was a miss. Um, Red isn't stupid. Um, I think he's doing great at making people trust him and also just think he's not that bright. But he's a smart guy. And, like, I think he was a little bit naive at first coming off that, out of that conversation. But getting looped in with, like, people, like, she's, he's going he's gonna to start getting a little antsy about why he's not being let in on information um i just don't think he would buy that other people don't know like i think he can sense who's felicia's closest allies are and red's not one of them um so i feel like felicia and Suri and izzy kind of do similar to what they were doing last week when they were going to switch the vote with their communication kind of uh isn't the best and like if you're going to backdoor hassam then you're about to blindside Red, too. I mean, even if you tell him before you put up Hassan, you're still blindsiding Red, in my opinion. Yeah. They're operating like a trio when they're in like a, what is it, seven-person alliance? Eight? Seven? I don't even know how many. Seven, I think. Um, well, it, it, it would be less when Hyson has gone. I, I don't get it. I think it's really interesting this season where a lot of people are good social players, a lot of good social players, really, really questionable sh strategic moves. It's true. Like, Sari is still so insulated, though, so I, I guess it's working. And, like, I think, to me, this theme of this season is social, because it doesn't matter if you're trying to create an onion alliance. If it's exposed, it's gone, right? Jared and Sari are super insulated, even if they have been a lot more antsy and like they they said too much or they've done too much. Um, same with Izzy, like it's and Felicia, like they're all like social players, and it's really cool to watch this because 
They don't give a fuck about compies helping them out. They don't give a fuck about strategy. <laughs> well, they do, but like their strategy is to be as social and as insane and chaotic as they are. Um, and it works somehow. Um, I do think it works more so for Sari than some of these other ones, though. She's I mean, the most insulated one. She's so good. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow she just missed them all. I mean, Jag walked into that conversation with Felicia and walked out thinking that he is in an alliance with her. So, yeah. that's I, I don't like all these alliance making because they even talked about last night making a girls thing and then now they want to do this whole alliance with Blue and Jag and Matt. It's, it's still a lot of alliances. I I like it. I think it's so because like the more alliances you make, the more things blow up because you're gonna choose an alliance over the other. So the fact that like like if Siri had won this one and put up Jag and Blue after like having this whole thing of wanting to work with them, like that's insane, you know. And I think that it they deserve to get blown up on, you know. Um, Felicia's doing a great job using Jag's last minute scramble as the reason. But it's really funny that each week it's like, you did something right before. Like, you did something right now, you're going out. Like, Kirsten was the first, Riley's the second, and now Jag is kind of the target if Hysom wins the veto. Um, so it's very interesting. Like, it's that's the theme right now. All the talking, though, that, like, Jag and Blue do, I mean, Matt, maybe not as much, but, like, it never, like, falls back on Suri somehow. Why is it not? I don't get it. I don't get it either. It's so cool. Like, it's 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 it kind of sucks because I can't really see the logic of like how Sari is doing it. I can only see that she is just really good at talking. But it's just like, is she that good that like they can't even sit alone for a second to think about who is pulling the strings and being like that's the person, like. But it almost felt like they uh, felt that way a couple days ago. Like it was Suri and Izzy pulling the strings. And yet right. I don't feel like it gets back through the house, even though all their other information gets back to the house, if that makes sense. I'm just hoping that like, I think Cameron is the piece here for things to get really chaotic. I really, really hope that <sighs> Cam tells Hysom to like that he's the backdoor target and Hysom wins a veto and like takes Cameron off or something. Like, I think that would be insane. I don't want that to happen. I want Cameron to go home, but it would be wild to see what Hysom would do with that information. Like he deserves, he cannot be backdoored right now. Like I, <laughs> he deserves the villain edit that he's getting. He needs the craziest storyline. I mean, for me, it's not even totally the villain thing. It's that, like, I feel like if he does stay this week and learns the information or somehow gets back door, but gets the boats to stay, well, I think that's the best case scenario. If Hassan gets put up on the block and but then somehow finds the boats to stay, because then it's an all out war after that. It will be really cool. Okay, so, like, if it's Cam versus Hysom, I can see the younger people, like, thinking of that as the move. See, I um, can't see them thinking that as a problem. I want them to think that. I, I no, see I, I see it in my eyes. I can't, I, you're right. I don't really see them coming to that conclusion, especially with Jared being that, like, double agent. But it would be so cool if, like, Heism's on, on a block, he gets so freaked out and flipped, like, flipped, like, pissed off and starts scrambling to the other side, tells him everything, blah, 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 blah. And people use him to get rid of the professors, the, the six of them who's left. That would be insane. And then the next week... Who would be the six votes do you think you could get? Because if it's those three... I mean, I think you could get red... Well, no, if Cam's on the block, you're going to get red. So, that's so okay. This is great because I want to see this happen the most, Cam versus Hysom, because Cam is the least integrated. So it would be Suri, Izzy, Red... Would definitely vote out Hysom. Probably Jared as well. Probably Jared. But I I don't really necessarily see like Mimi doing that necessarily. Like over camera. I think she's a possibility. Um, I think America maybe even too. But I don't think Corey would. I think Corey, Corey would vote Hysom. Corey would okay. So like 
five, and then what? America, Mimi, Blue, Jag, and Matt. Five, five. So like, they would just need Bowie? that. They would need. Oh wait, we didn't count Bowie. <laughs> who can remember? Who? Oh. who can remember Bowie? But you think Bowie would be closer to Cam than Hysum? Like when it, when push comes to shove, just think about it. You know, like if okay, so if Hysum gets put on the block, the professor gets exposed completely. This is a repeat of week two where Riley like has to scramble. Right? If everyone knows about the professors, then why would Mimi say? Why would people like maybe Bowie Jane might not even say? Like, it doesn't mean necessarily that the professors stay together. Like, Izzy, Felicia, and Sari might just outcast themselves because they were the ones who were being messy, doing all these things, now backdooring Hysum, like all this stuff. I want to see it. I want to see like a really, very close 6 5 vote or 7, whatever. I do too. I unfortunately think it's a long shot, but I do want to see that. And it's a long shot. This house wants to be unanimous. I, hate it. I was so shocked by Matt not even voting. Like, just one person. You know? Yeah, I don't know why it is about Big Brother US that it has to be unanimous in the end. Like, you no, know where everyone's voting. Yeah, plus, this is, like, now ammunition for JAG. Because I think Heisman was like, oh, well, like, JAG is all about loyalty, but he didn't even vote for her. Like, it's easy to be, if you know that you're, if you know Riley's going, it's okay to vote for her. There, no one's going to be surprised that you voted for her. Everyone knows that you were fighting for her. It is so confusing that these people do that. It's, yeah, it's one of the reasons I don't have a lot of hope in these younger people to uh, pull something this week. Yeah, it is so bad. Especially with what Jag did, apparently. I don't, like, being that scrambling at the very last second. What is the point? What is the actual angle here you know uh how, how do you feel about the whole q-tip heart <laughs> <laughs> i love i i love it um i'm very 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 alarmed by it <laughs> i think um i think it's a little extra and a little <laughs> very extra kind of weird but like because he's not weird about it like he's just endearing Sorry, there's a lot of noise downstairs, but um, Jesus. But <laughs> Somebody's yeah, partying. Someone's partying. It's a car, too. Oh, wow. um, but no, Matt is just super endearing. I do love him. I think that his actress is so weird. Like, I, when he, like, expressed his crush to her, um, and she just, like, oh, thanks, and, like, hugged him, I was like, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. Like, I can't watch this further. It's just... It was too much. Awkward. It was too much. I didn't. I didn't see this on feeds, but people were talking about on Twitter that apparently Hassan used one of the cutest to clean his hair. He's such a fucking villain. If that's true, I would um, do that. <laughs> <laughs> I I had a dream the other day that I was on Big Brother and like I was speaking to the late night crew, and I was saying how like please don't cancel me because I'm not about to say some crazy <laughs> shit just to like be in the show and like be a villain. Like I'm about to lie on everyone's name. Like stuff like that. I love watching people like that. Um, it, it just makes it fun. Like Izzy, a chaotic person. I just love it. Sari is a great liar. <laughs> Sari. Speaking of Sari, I feel like something that isn't getting talked about enough is her big weakness this season, in my opinion. Which, which is? is paranoia. Sari is very paranoid. Sari is very, very paranoid only because. There's nothing else to do. Like she, I think she's mentioned like Survivor. You just like sit alone and watch the sunset, and no one's gonna bother you. Makes sense. Here, it's like you don't have time to like just sit and think and process. It doesn't and, help that Izzy's always in her. Right, and Izzy is. I I almost thought Izzy was doing it on purpose because I'm like Izzy, you're like driving her nuts. I think that's just, just, that's that. just yeah, exactly. But I think she Sari is definitely someone who kind of takes in people's energies and emotions and and just kind of acts on them a little bit. Um, Izzy does affect her, believe it or not. Like Izzy really, really affects her gameplay, um, and it's kind of interesting to watch because she's able to be this paranoid and still kind of fly under the radar for some godforsaken reason. Um, so I don't I know. I guess her social game is just that strong. That's what we're I mean, saying. So. Yeah, and everyone's just dumb. 
like really dumb. Yeah, they are a little dumb. I, I do feel like this move, I don't know if you feel the same way. If Hassan does go this week, it has to like eventually make Jared's target bigger. I mean, are they bigger faster? Because there's all the talk of by some of the women that men need to go and we need to be women strong, which is how I know the women's alliance is never going to work because he's <laughs> never going to go after Jared. But I do feel like a big target like I'm going has to maybe bring Jared more to the forefront. I think so. But at the same time, Jared ha is still able to play this double agent and not be anyone's radar. Like, so far... Everyone is still like Jared's with us. Um, I mean, S J Jared is with Suri, but like on the Gen Zers, they do still feel good with Jared and they're including him on these plans. And so, yeah, the target will grow, but I don't, right at this current moment, I think Suri could go before Jared, which is crazy. Um, I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't know. I don't know who, who is. Who is going after Jared? If I don't think anybody's going after Jared. I just think that if Hassan does go and you're looking at big targets in the house, Jared is going to rise. Because this this group so far, well, not the first week, but this last week and this week, oh, we got to get off the big targets. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Honestly, at this point, I'm, we're just going to see Suri and Felicia at the final two, and it's not even going to be a, a unanimous vote on Suri. <laughs> uh, I don't know about that one, Jared. I don't know. On Monday, we talked about America needing to uh, up her social game, and I feel like by the end of the week, she definitely did so. Oh, yeah. I feel like right after we talked about it, I think that's literally when she started to do it, and we were like, you only have a week and a half or whatever, like – to do this and she is doing it and it's subtle enough that it's not like oh she's jumping ship it was it's more so like now let, let's play and i think she worked on her with uh nicole she's working on felicia she's working really well and she's like kind of funny too like she's like talking about like i think she was talking to jag and she was like we <laughs> like she, she's like don't group us together <laughs> um they are playing opposite games even if you think they're aligned. Um, so I do like America's gameplay. I, I do I do dig it. I think she's actually being more active than Mimi, um, yeah. which is really interesting. So I do feel like she and Corey have the best grab, grasp on like Big Brother overall or the game overall. I think they're the bigger fans. Yeah. I mean, I would love to see America slash Corey slash Mimi win. Um, if they're really, really good at this, playing the middle, playing both sides, um, like th that is very impressive to me. Um, it's not the most interesting right now, but it's like, it's really cool to watch because I think it's really hard to not be seen, but also respected, you know, like Bowie Jane at the moment doesn't seem respected enough, but I think over time, all three of those uh, players will be respected when yeah. it gets to the end, so... I do feel like at least America and Corey's weakness, and maybe even Nicole, is that I don't know if they are ever going to be aggressive enough. Like, because the other people in the house can be very aggressive, at least informing things and uh, targeting people, while those three aren't. And I feel like they might need to eventually, or they're just going to get picked up too. There, there's definitely signs. Like the first week, America, Kirsten was better for America's game. And she didn't do anything about it, which is fine. She tried, but it was like falling on deaf ears. Yeah. Like she didn't she didn't succeed at all, which is fine. First week, you don't want to do too crazy, right? Mimi also had the same option of like when people were wanting to flip to save Riley. She her brain was blowing, like blowing up. She was like so confused by this plan, but she didn't do anything about it really. So she kind of just let it happen. Thankfully, Suri and Izzy went back on their word. Um, or else Mimi would have been like, this is a bad move, but she didn't do anything to stop it. So at a certain point, especially like mid-game, I would say you got to start making your moves, especially when you need to. Like you have to assess when is the best time to be like stepping up and be like, this can't happen. Um, 
and I, I do see the hesitancy in all three of them, which sucks, but it also could work with this cast because like no one's thinking about them three at the moment that much. They're expendable, but they're not like immediate targets. So if they just keep building up other people as targets, then maybe they'll be fine. That's true. I guess I'm just wondering also, like, is Corey ever going to, because he's going to get any information. Like, if all, all these people doing so much, making all these alliances come out, is Corey ever going to want to yeah. see Jared or Suri as a bigger, I mean, he saw Suri at first as a bigger target, but now I feel like he's working closely with them. Yeah, Corey's the type of guy that, like, should be playing where he gets this information and then finds one person that he really, really trusts and have them be the puppet master, or like the figurehead, and like have them do the moves that he wants. I think that is his perfect move. He hasn't found anyone to do that though. Um, maybe I feel like he wants it to be Jared. Maybe it is Jared, and that's really. fine. But Jared can't go after Sari, which no one knows this. So it's like that's the only thing. That's the only thing I, that sucks about the Sari slash Jared thing is like those two are good enough players to like be hidden and be good at this game. At least Suri is. And Jared, like, it's going to be so hard. Like, Corey can't use Jared to get rid of Suri, even though that makes the most sense for Corey is to use Jared to get rid of Suri or, like, whatever the case is, right? So it just sucks because, like, he, he won't go after Izzy, Suri, or Felicia, really. But that's what he should do if he was not related to Suri, you know? <laughs> it's true. Um, and yeah, like America is doing well with Matt. Like there's there's some things that I mean I think America could use Matt as well. Matt is a loyal player, um, but yeah, those three need to like refine their gameplay. They're really good at playing this middle and under the radar, but they're not getting to the point where like they're controlling it secretly, which is what they need to do. You said earlier that you feel like Cameron is an important piece. Uh... Yeah, I think Cameron is an, is is possibly an important piece to this week's narrative, not the game. Okay. Um, I think he's an important piece to Hysum finding things out. He's an important piece to Red possibly breaking off of the professors um, because Felicia told more things to Cameron than she told uh, Red, honestly, it's, it's and. That is going to get back to Red. Like, I don't know why she thought that that was a good idea. If you don't say anything to Red, don't say anything to Cameron either. Um, but I think Cameron could be like, what if he flip-flops back to the, the kids, whatever, right? Like, he's going to be, I think, at least an important part to this week. I hope he still goes. But it would be nice to see him do stuff for this. Because, honestly, he did a good job trying to talk himself off of that block. He did. I have to say... He used a good amount of emotional, like, you know, like, attack to it, but also logic. Um, it does make sense to have Jag and Blue on the block because they would both gun for it, and then Hassan would go up. Whereas, like, well, like, for Jag and Blue, right? Like, if Blue is not on the block with, Cam like, Cameron and Jag are on the block, right? Blue could play, win, and take Jag off. Then you have no options, and you put up Hassan. But, like, either way, it was an okay pitch, and I think Felicia did think about it through, like, really, really seriously, but she already has her mind up, I think. As a player, he's, he's like, a, the, the true wild card to me. Like, I have no idea what he wants to do, what he's, what his game plan is, what he's gonna do. Um, he has the weirdest ways to go about things. Sometimes they actually work. Like, him not gaming for those first three days when he was on the block with Riley helped. It, did actually. it really helped. Because then, like, you know, people wanting to save Riley, like, there's all this scrambling. But then Cameron just seems calm and chill and not going to do anything. And that's all that you need to stay on the, on the block and not go home. Um, and now Foolish is like, you're a good pawn, which kind of sucks. But, like, he did what he needed to do to stay because he almost – he could have almost went home. Um, yeah, like you said, I do think he fits the uh, the good social player narrative. I don't know if some of his strategies make a lot of sense to me, but socially, he's better than I've given him credit so, for so far. I don't even know if it's social. I almost think it is strategy, but I don't think he's aware of the strategy. Like, like <laughs> he's employing things that actually work strategically, which is like 
not scrambling too much, um, not like being a lone soldier versus someone who has four people with her, right? Like he wasn't campaigning super hard for the Gen Zers to pick him over Riley. Like if he did that, like that could have spread more, like that could have done some damage. I don't know if he's socially playing that well though, because no one really wants him as like a number one besides Red, I would say. But I think he's like stumbled into some good strategic moves so far. I, th- um, I think he's better like one on one with people. Yeah, I guess he that. would take the time. He doesn't play aggressively though, like a lot of these players. So it's pretty good actually. Like it's it's good to not play aggressively sometimes. It really is. Like you don't want to be this aggressive this early. Yeah, that's true. Uh, well, I guess any final thoughts on the week? Hassam's target on his back. <sighs> um, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I think this could be a very boring week if things happen the way they do. Like how? I don't, I don't think this week will be boring, but or like, well, I think next I, week could be boring because of this week. Right. So if Hassam goes, I think a few weeks could be pretty boring. Um, but I, I am excited. Like, I do kind of want someone to get off the block and Heisman gets on the block and then fights himself to stay and that's then succeeds it. That's, that's that best is, case scenario. That is the best case scenario. And then, unfortunately, Flish would be the target, but I don't want that necessarily. I, I want, don't know if she, well, she, she would be his target. She would be his target. Um I don't know, but Felicia might be a comp piece. Like you never like who That's knows? True. Who knows? She they seem to be doing way. a little harder uh, fair competitions. Well, I, not towards yeah. Matt, I suppose, but yeah. others. Matt is also going to like puppy dog his way to the end. Like no one's gonna want to take him out, which is freaking amazing. Like he's not even doing anything like strategically or socially. He is just being himself and being vulnerable, and that is what's working, which always works, usually. If you're pretty like Matt, <laughs> <laughs> I guess but it true. really works. Like it, like for the most part, it works. You know, even if you're like, like Heisen has so many walls up as a person right now because of the way he's playing, he comes off super unapproachable and super evil. You know, and that's just not going to work. You ha- even if you're evil, you gotta play very vulnerable. You gotta let your emotions come out a little bit without making rash decisions. And Matt is just Matt's just being Matt, and that's yeah. great. The Riley obsession has to go. There. It it should He's leave. About, we need to find a time every night to talk to Riley on the feeds. Like, she's not watching this anymore. <laughs> I would be so annoyed if I got out second and started watching the feeds. No, <laughs> you would watch the feeds. I think. I don't think. Mm, I, I would watch recaps of this. Yeah, I would probably watch recaps. I, I would. don't know if I believe you. I would. But I wouldn't I leave. I wouldn't you'd leave. You'd be right there on the feeds rooting for people's downfalls. I also would not be leaving second week. Sorry. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that's all for now with the new week. Thank yeah. you, Alex. See you next week.